Hey everybody, thanks for tuning back into OTRAM's YouTube channel, your source for Land Cruiser uh, repair and modification videos. Uh, today we're continuing on with our 80 series uh, rear brakes. Um, in the last two videos we did uh, pads, rotors, calipers, and then another one on wheel bearings. Um, so today we're going to do parking brake, shoes, hardware, and how to fix the sticky parking uh, brake bell cranks. So let me swivel you down. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is start taking all of our shoes off. Um, so you reach around back and you'll feel the back side of the pin these are hooked on. And you can just kind of push in, swivel them, and they'll come off. Um, and I guess I should say, before you pull it apart, take a picture of it so you can always know how it was or how it looked. Um, or better yet, just do one side at a time, and that way you've got a reference uh, to know how it goes back together. And this one's not wanting to come undone. Sorry, I'm going to have to block the camera here for just a sec. There we go. Couldn't get my hand around to fish that out of there. Get that pin through. There we go. So with those out, we can go ahead and take these top two springs off and one will be in front of the other. And I just grab them with vice grips and snap them out. Uh, pay attention to which way this dog bone comes out. And then you can pop your adjuster out of here. Also pay attention to which way the adjuster was facing. And then we'll pop the other upper spring off. And then there was another little one that just fell off that goes to this arm here. And then there's one snapped into these little brackets on the back of the rotors here. And then I'm trying to get this to where you can see it. If you pull back on this spring wrapping, you can shove the cable through and unhook this arm. And there we go there. And this is the parking brake crank that always gets stuck. Um, so I'm going to take a pry bar and pry it back from this side so I can get a better angle on it. You can see it moving back there some. Come on. I'm just trying to get it clear so that I can get, there's a little horseshoe retainer that's on the top of this. Okay, so we need to get this little horseshoe clip guy off of here. And these are always a pain, and especially once they've gotten rusty. And a lot of times if you take a flat chisel, you can scoot it, scoot the horseshoe back and then you can get just a tapered like center punch under the actual horseshoe part of it. And continue knocking it off. 
and it's just this little horseshoe guy here. And then you can take the pin out and take this little e-brake bracket off. And then you can see how stiff this lever is. Let me move you around to the other side real quick. And that's not a great view, but I don't know that I'm gonna get much better. And I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna grab on. There we go. Grab one spring and then grab another. And then there's a cotter pin, or not a cotter pin, but a retainer pin under here. seized in there. There we go. It's a little horseshoe pin. And then we should be able to drive the pin up out of the e-brake cable. There we go. And we can pull the cable off. And then there's a little U-shaped spring clip on here. We'll put in the parts bucket. So now that we've got everything unhooked from the back side, there are two 12 millimeter headed bolts here in the backing plate that hold that aluminum housing on. And now we can take the whole bracket off and we can fish this boot off of here. And the problem is it's an aluminum housing with a steel arm in it and it gets all full of corrosion in here and the pin corrodes on and you can hardly see it, but there's another one of those horseshoe clips here. Um, I'm going to move this over to the vise and I'm going to do it off camera because I don't have a good way of filming it for you. But I'm going to knock this horseshoe clip off and I'm going to drive the pin through. And then I'm going to take this over to the bead blaster and I'm going to blast all this clean before I repack it with grease. Um, it's real common for this aluminum housing to shatter when you try to drive the pin through. Luckily, they're uh, still available and really cheap from Toyota. So I'm gonna break all that apart, get everything cleaned up, and then I'll bring you back for reassembly. Okay, so we've got our parking brake bell crank. Um, I don't know how well you can see that against this black workbench, but I went ahead and media blasted it and uh, you know got all the corrosion off of it and then threw a coat of spray paint on it. And I also blasted the little aluminum housing that goes with it. And what we like to do is we use uh, this extreme uh, ceramic brake lube. It's really thick and it's waterproof and we just glob that on to the arm where it goes into the housing. And I should have thought this through and not done that before I was I did the housing. But then we'll stick you know a glob of it in the housing as well just to make sure everything's coated. Uh, and then you just feed the arm back through. And we got a new pin in our kit. And so we'll stick the, stick the pin through there. And then I got a, you know, a new hardware kit for these. It's not absolutely necessary, 
But if you're going in this far, it's nice to have all the new clips and springs and stuff, because usually it's pretty worn out. And you just take one of these horseshoes and crimp it around on there. And then I'll take more of this grease and pack it in on either side of the bell crank. That way, as this thing moves back and forth, it's constantly coated. We'll get that all packed full. And then I left the boot sitting on the floor over here. Then we can just take our boot and fish it back on there. And then it just kind of wraps around and lines up on there. This one's seen better days, but it's still serving its purpose. Uh, this truck had real bad rear axle leak. So everything's, all the rubber's been coated in gear oil and it's kind of swelled all the rubbers. Uh, but that's basically how we fix the parking brake bell cranks. And I'll go back, you know, we'll move back over to the truck and put it on. But while we're over here at the bench, while we're over here at the bench, let's get our parking brake shoe ready as well. So I've taken the old shoe and I ran this through the parts washer because it was so disgusting. But we need to take this parking brake lever off. And it's got just another one of these horseshoe clips. So we're just gonna take a, take a punch and start spreading that. And these are fun because they like to swivel while you're trying to do them. But once you get a little bit of a gap on the U-shaped side, you can drive a uh, center punch down behind there and pop them the rest of the way out with the center punch. And we'll pop that arm up off of there. And there's a, a little shim washer that sits on top of there as well, which we've got a new one of those in the kit. So I'm just gonna really lightly put my new shoe in the vise, set my arm on there, set my new shim, and then I'm gonna grab a new horseshoe and start it on there. And these are tricky with that shim because the shim wants to walk while you're doing it. But you can just take a pair of pliers and squeeze it on there. And then spin it around so it's easier to get at. And then we'll just squeeze that horseshoe shut. And then our arm is ready to go. So let me, I'll move you back down under the truck and we'll keep on moving. Okay, so now we're back here under the truck and we're gonna take our reassembled uh, greased parking brake bell crank and we're gonna fish it through here from the back. We're gonna edit that out. We're gonna snug these up. Be careful, these like to break. Um, we're gonna come around to the backside and I'm not gonna move the camera around this time. Uh, we're gonna come around and hook the cable back up and it's just the opposite of the way we unhooked it.
and I am struggling <laughs> with getting this back in there. There we go. Give my bracket a little bit squeeze to get it centered up. And then I can take that little hairpin clip and stick it back through. If I can see the hole, there we go. So now our cable is working our bell crank there. And that's pretty awesome. Uh, these are the springs that go on the back. For some reason, the kit only gave us two of them. Um, so that's super helpful. But I'm gonna feed those in. And these are kind of awkward to get back in. There we go. So now our crank is spring loaded. And we can go ahead and take the little bar that hooks it to the e-brake, or to the parking brake shoe rather. And I'm gonna take a little bit of synthetic brake grease and smear it inside of there. So that when I stick it on there and stick my pin through, it gets a bunch of that up around my pin as well. And then I'm going to grab the smaller U-clip from my set. And I'm going to stick it around my pin. And it would actually have been easier if I'd done this, this part before I put the springs on the back so that this would stay out where I can get at it more easily. But now that that U-clip's on there, I can just bend it over. Straighten that out a little bit. There we go. And now we're all secured with our cable here. I'm going to take some more of this synthetic brake grease and I'm going to wipe it here where the tops of my shoes contact. And then I'm going to do a light coating on all of these raised pads on the backing plate. Like that. And now we can kind of start sticking everything back together. So I'm going to take my arm here and I'm going to peel that retainer spring back and feed, feed the end in. And I can flip that around and kind of seat it up into there. And this is the part where they get kind of fun. We're going to take the bent, uh, retainer pin and you can feed it back in. There's a hole back here that that feeds through. And then it sits in that slot like that. And then you take one of these retainer clips. It sits over that and the little leg goes in the hole down here. And then I find it easiest to, oops, come on, stay with me. To take the hat and the retainer clip together and stick them on there. 
and then you just stick it through and a quarter turn locks it. So now this shoe is kind of held where it needs to be and isn't going to flop around on us. I'm going to go ahead and take my lower spring and feed it into the back. go. And then you've got the end pieces and the threaded portion for your adjuster. I take some anti C's and stick it in the threaded end and then also in the just free spinning end so that these don't seize up and stick. And we're going to run that threaded end in all the way for now. And then the threaded end points away. So this is the threaded end. It points away from the shoe with the arm on it. And then we're going to take one of these weird rectangle springs and we're going to stick it on our dog bone here. And that guy's going to kind of sit like that. We're just going to let it hang out there for a second. I'm going to grab a straight one of the retainer pins. And I'm going to feed it through from back here. I'm going to get a retainer and a hat and a spring ready. And I'm going to hook this lower blue spring down here on the bottom in one of these raised stamped areas. Come on, hook. There we go. I'm going to kind of seat this up here in place. I can move that retainer pin in. And I can slide that guy over. Before I get ahead of myself, I need to stick this guy in. And this is where it gets fun when you're trying to juggle eight million pieces while you're putting this together. There we go, quarter turn, and that one's on. And then this little guy, this little white spring, with the long hook, hooks over down here. And there's my pliers. goes up into the same hole as this retainer. And we can stick Well, I thought I could stick that guy in after the fact. There we go. Stick our adjuster in there. And now we can do our top springs. And they'll hook in one of these back holes. And there we 
There's that one. And we'll grab another one. And it'll go the opposite direction. And then sometimes you've got to squeeze them a little bit to get them to seat down on this pin. But there is our parking brake assembly all back in there. And you can see as you pull the parking brake, it moves them. Uh, so I've got this adjusted all the way in right now. Once we've got the, the hub and everything back on, we'll come back through and adjust it. Uh, so let me get uh, let me get that reassembled and I'll bring you back. Now that we've got our parking brake shoes and everything all put back together, uh, we can throw our rotor back on with uh, two two lug nuts holding it. And then there's a small hole down here in the rotor. Well, it may not be down there. You got to spin it around until you can look through this hole and see the adjuster wheel and then you're going to go in there with a flat blade screwdriver come on and you're going to roll that wheel around until you can't roll it around anymore and the drum is tight if you roll it in one direction uh, you'll just thread the threads all the way in. Um, so yeah, all the way in the direction that tightens the pads inside the drum. And there we go. I think I'm right there. Yeah, that's getting there. And once you're tight, just back it off like eight teeth. And then you should spin freely. And with that, you're, uh, parking brake is all done. Uh, so I hope you found how to do uh, parking brake and parking brake lever on an 80 series Land Cruiser useful. If you did, please subscribe below. If you really enjoy our videos, uh, consider hitting our Patreon link down in the description. Uh, we really appreciate the support. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you next time.